your introductions are a bit late. Don't you think you should put better use to what little time you have left? It's hard to tell when you're going to fall down a rabbit hole. It's even harder to tell when you'll climb back out. While researching the authors of Kinakumin for a previous video, an interview with series creator Yoshiro Nakai enlightened all who read it that he spends most of his time at home and who his favorite actress was. She's a woman known by the name of Mariko Kawana, intrigued as the name wasn't the standard fare or a well-known actress. Digging into the rabbit hole, it turns out Miss Kawana was a Japanese porn star. She also entered the game late, but in doing so, she was a pioneer of various sub at the time, creating a lasting impact in the Japanese porn industry. While today she still manages to continue her passions prior to entering the porn industry, her career in life during and after porn is littered with interesting moments Moments, some of which exemplify underground culture at the time in Japan. Outlandish moments like her needing to lie about being older to break into the industry, or even as her being the number one porn star in North Korea in 2010. Get out of here! Thus, the spiral into early 2000s underground and Japanese porn industry began. As a side note, covering one individual's full body of work is a big task to undertake, so this will be a two-part video. So make sure to check that one out when it becomes available. A freelance writer turned porn star, turned director, turned author of erotica, turned labor rights activist, turned horror novelist. These are all pieces that make up the enigmatic figure in the early 2000s to the present. This is the story of Mariko Kawana. With the advent of services like OnlyFans, Pornhub, and Live Jasmine, independent sexual expression, at least in the West, has never been more available, consumed, but above all else accepted as everyday and normal occurrence. One could argue that despite the advancements in Western pornographic consumption, we are still in the early phases of decentralized tipping and producing, where the viewers have complete control of the content they consume and watch, paying for what really gets them going. Oh, behave. It can even be argued platforms like Twitch would not exist if not for the consistent boundaries being pushed by the members of the porn industry, as they were some of the first to introduce live streaming services with active user chatting and giving feedback to the on-screen performers. It wouldn't be a far stretch to say, if there is a trend to be set, oftentimes it will originate from the porn industry. As porn culture has had to fight against the stench and label of taboo nearly from its modern day inceptions, bucking trends and consistently showing the world what's really popular and what people really want. You could say individuals in the porn industry are some of the most rebellious people on the planet. However, in many other parts of the world, porn is seen less as an expression of one's sexuality and should be something not spoken of, tucked away in the shadows of Eastern taboos. Yet despite Eastern societies, Japan in particular, want and desire to censor or do away with the carnal urges in the human psyche, underground cultures thrive off this, for better or for worse, creating unintentional celebrities into the ones who can survive and adapt to the ever-changing landscape. Enter Mariko Kawana. The date of her birth is a bit conflicted as there are conflicting sources that say she was either born on August 23rd, 1967 or November 9th, 1967, the latter of which is the more popular reference. She was born in Setagaya, Tokyo, Japan. However, much of her early life either isn't chronicled very well or is hidden in various smaller interviews on obscure Japanese websites. She does have a Wikipedia page, albeit a short one with many of her life's details missing. Another interesting tidbit is that attempting to locate other wiki-like sources would always lead to the same paragraphs as the Wikipedia page, word for word. Which leads me to believe that one of three things could have happened. She could theoretically have been the one to post it on the various pages, some of her diehard fans copy and paste it on almost every wiki-style website, or, and most likely the case, various wikis are just stealing info off of each other. Either way, and unfortunately, without reaching out to her specifically, many of her early life's details will remain a mystery. However, I discovered a few avenues to create correspondence, and it was through these links I discovered some info not present on many of these basic surface-level biographical websites. Kawana Mariko attended Joshibi University of Art and Design, graduating with the class of 1988. Speaking off the cuff from here a little bit, I had to do a little translating myself in regards to Mariko Kawana's time between graduating college to her debut in adult videos. I, I don't speak Japanese and needed to utilize Google Translate, so kind of take the level of accuracy with a 
grain of salt. Mariko Kawana received her degree in graphics design. However, soon after graduating college, she began her career as a freelance writer and also worked as a publisher. Little is known or written about in terms of what Mariko Kawana's life entailed during this time frame, similar to any information about her early life. It is a fascinating time frame though, considering she would eventually write novels after her porn career ended. One could speculate and wonder if she had published any works worth of note that could correlate to her future writings. However, similar to her upbringing, this gap in time is a bit of a mystery worth digging into more. It's interesting to speculate though, as Mariko Kawana would later become a horror author and a member of the Mystery Writers of Japan. Perhaps this may have been her passion from the offset? Regardless though, Mariko Kawana does have a way to be contacted, and as of the making of this video, I have reached out for questions in regards to her upbringing, life in general, and anything that could potentially be enlightened pieces of information in regards to her life or her work. How Mariko Kawana made the jump from the world of freelance writing to porn is currently a mystery. One would assume she became involved similarly to many women who are tricked into the underground Japanese pornography business by empty promises and then being required to pay off a debt. However, and surprisingly, this was not the case for Mariko Kawana. She in fact joined the industry of her own volition. What is also interesting is that competition was fierce as a new genre was beginning to crop its head in the industry. The madam or mature woman genre was just taking off in Japan. Mariko Kawana seeing the opportunity lied about her age of 31 and claimed to be 34, as she was still a little too young to fit this niche demographic. Thus, she was cast in her first major adult movie, 34 year old Mariko. The rest would become history. She would continue to work in the porn industry from 1999 to 2003. A relatively short career when looking at it with a macro lens. However, it was stated earlier that today, many people have the luxury of buying a webcam, getting online, and being paid to perform sexual acts or pose nude at their own leisure. And as long as the money is still rolling in, they can afford to work whenever they desire. It's one of the perks of a semi-decentralized system. However, when looking at the numbers of how long many of the porn stars, or for that matter, people who dip their toes into the porn industry, they can last anywhere between six to 18 months. And that's including platforms like porn Hub today. If you look at many channels you have enjoyed over the years, Do I make you horny, baby? Yeah. you'll see that a lot have died out. Individual tastes change and what someone may enjoy today soon becomes less titillating of an experience. Meow. Meow. If this were a Rocky movie, however, Mariko Kawana went the distance. She did everything from star to direct in various adult videos, many of which were hardcore pornography flicks. This would range from mother-in-law films like her famous debut to lesbian films with a <clears throat> chocolate twist like Urinal Poop Girl True Data. Honestly, I kind of thought about showing that particular uh, box art. But then I had to think, okay, if I show that, I'm gonna get kicked off YouTube so fast. Like, I don't know if it would be the bots or the algorithm or what it was that would pick that up, but I'd be gone. And truth, it's not the front of the box that's the issue, it's the back of the box of that particular DVD. Um, and then I thought about maybe uh, like censoring it or trying to blur out some of the images and stuff. And then I thought like, that's kind of pointless because then I'd basically be showing like a blurred out image and it's just not really that interesting to look at. What I can tell you is that if you do want to find <laughs> that particular back box art image, um, and if you are an astute discoverer and adventurer and you look in the right places, you can find it. Uh, what's actually kind of interesting also is that a lot of um, her filmography is kind of hard to get here in the West. And I don't know if it's just out of print or if it's just they don't really sell her uh, particular movies over here or what I don't I don't know what really know what the deal is however kind of like with finding um, that particular back box art if you want to find and purchase her DVDs they are out there um, I don't know if they're official sources I would always say if you're going to purchase anything do it officially but uh, you know if you want to find the stuff any aspect of it if you look hard enough it's it's definitely there. And I'm not even kink shaming because I'm into some weird ass shit. Just like I know you are. Mariko Kawana debuted right as Japan was looking to capitalize on middle-aged women, running the gamut from bukkake films to pink adult films. 
which are essentially the softcore porn of the West. Many of these subgenres had already been a staple in the Japanese porn industry, but what set her apart from many of their contemporaries was her age. The want for MILF porn had caught on like wildfire in Japan, and Mariko Kawano was smack dab in the middle of it, inadvertently becoming a pioneer of the genre in and of itself, with its effects still being felt today. If an individual was to find themselves on a pornographic website with their browser and cookies cleared, sure enough, they will find in the top 10 consistently some sort of MILF porn, be it stepmother, mother-in-law, etc. She was not the first, but she can be considered an original right at the forefront of the trend. So how did this trend start? It's hard to pinpoint how in fact any trend really starts. I would argue this took place right after the release of American Pie though. There's literally no evidence to suggest this other than the dates. American Pie was released on July 9th in the West. After its release, everyone, literally everyone was talking about MILFs. Perhaps it isn't an impossible notion that Japan will be swept up into MILF hysteria as much as the rest of the world was. In 2012, as reported on in an article by Tokyo Reporter, that mature women were so sought after in the porn industry that many actresses in their mid-20s were lying about being in their 40s just so they could get work. To say the trend was showing no sign of stopping would be an understatement. Mariko found herself at the forefront of a trend that to this day can't stop and probably never will. What of Mariko Kawana's final years as well as the impact she left during her career? It's difficult to pin down hard numbers of her pornography sales. However, after she retired, she was the master of ceremonies for the 20th anniversary celebration of a Japanese publication called Video Boy. She also produced a highly coveted book entitled Sex Evolution, Mariko Kawana, which featured many nude images of her while she was pregnant. This book goes for well over $400 on many online marketplaces. To say she did not leave an impact on people would be a gross understatement. Mariko's farewell video was released in 2004, and it was produced and directed by her now husband, Goro Tameki, who, crazy enough, was the director of her first pornographic film, 34-year-old Mariko. She would later state that it was on this very film that she met and fell in love with Goro, stating that meeting him changed her life forever, and that for the first time she felt like she was truly in love. It's impossible to know what her life was like prior to her turn to porn. However, from an outsider's perspective, that simple act of rebellion on her part, going against the norm, ended up radically changing her path forever. Some people could only wish to have a fraction of that. Mariko may have lived a full life up to that moment, but it was far from over. Once the opponents have named themselves, the fight has begun. <laughs> What? You have got to be kidding. Hey everybody, thanks for watching to the end of the video. Um, I just want to take a quick second to thank all the new subscribers. I genuinely appreciate that and hope you guys are enjoying the content that I've been putting out the past couple of weeks. Um, it has been a little bit of time between my videos. I do want to try to shorten the gap, but you can expect probably a new one every two weeks or so uh, with my schedule and everything currently. Um, I don't necessarily have any new shoutouts to give this week, but I'll go ahead and give it to the Psycho Gamers 15 as well as Wrestling Bios for the help the past couple of weeks. You guys are amazing. Um, look forward to part two coming up soon because there is a lot more information to cover on this particular topic. If you also have any other topics that you would like me to take a look at, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys, and make sure to keep things light and rebellious, and I will see you guys next time.